Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. Well, I've got the 65 Thunderbird hardtop here, and uh, the front windows are giving me some issues. The rear windows work well, uh, seem to be working well. The front windows seem to be, uh, they've lost their ground. Uh, they're getting power to the window motors um, because you can tell by the load that goes on them. So as I was saying, the when I hit the swin window switch you know, on the console here, I can see that there's power going to the door and this is the window that won't go down or up, but it does uh, bog the light down. So I turn the ignition switch on, well, not start the engine. <laughs> now, if you'll see down close at that uh, interior light on the door, you'll see that it actually dims a tiny bit, both up and down. And you won't hear it in here, but I can hear a clicking. So I can hear the uh, relay, power window relay click. So I'm thinking it's the grounds on this car. The back windows work good as I'll show this one over here on this side. It dips down nice and back up nice. Both sides are the same. Uh, when I did work to these back windows, the, uh, I had to add a ground on the floor uh, near the window to make them work that smooth. So what's going on in here is uh, the wire harness comes comes out of the switch, goes through the door to the motor, uh, but the ground is actually up on the dash, up under the dash on this side, and up under the dash on the other side. So there's two grounds for the front doors, the back, or the front windows rather, and the back windows have their own grounds. So I'm going to be tackling the grounds up in here, and hopefully that's the problem. If it's not the ground, we'll have to take the door panel off and go into the connection uh, three wire connection near the motor and i'll show you one right here so i've got a window regulator right here and this is for the driver's side of these cars and there's the three wire connector i'm talking about and it's right about a foot off of the motor so hopefully we don't have to go in there because when i put the panels on i cleaned all those but i'm thinking it's the ground on the on the dash so we'll start with that before we get into it i'll just show you the wire diagram of the of the circuit for the windows and uh, quickly I don't know if uh, I can bring in on this here uh, this this is the fuse panel right here and there's the breaker I was talking about and then it goes out and there's a splice hopefully there's nothing wrong in that splice but it not likely there is and then the power goes out to each window and then the, the power also continues on and goes in through the switch there's a lock switch on on for the for the power window uh, switch assembly itself. And then it sends commands out, but they're powered individually from the front. So they're separate. And then the back one goes the same way. And there's where I put the grounds in. This is where the ground was on the old one. And I put a ground on each side on the back one. So they work really well. So the front one's still having issues. So right here is the ground for the right side and there's the ground for the left side and we'll flip it over the page if i can and you'll see in here it only shows the one ground but the one ground right there is it's it says uh, ground to the dash right there so i found that and that's a gray wire and there's also another one over there so there's one on each side the gray wire so that's what we're going after today to get this straightened away. And if we can't get that, then we go back down in here to this plug right there, but we'd have to go on both doors. And don't really wanna pull the panels off both doors when I know I've already cleaned those. So we'll focus on the grounds right now. So that's it. Okay, let's go up underneath this uh, passenger side and see if I can show you where that uh, ground is on this one. So you'll see it right there. That's the ground for the right there. That's it right there. And it's a 5 16 on this side. I think it's the same on the other side. So I'm not going to be able to uh, do the work and show you at the same time, but we'll see what happens. And that's the, the gray wire is right there on it, right there. There's the gray wire that I was telling you about. That's the ground for the window. All right, let me get a socket and then a universal. And we'll see if we can get this to get this apart. I 
started working underneath here and I just couldn't get in there to get at those ground wires properly. There they are right there. The two, there's two that were on that one uh, bolt or that one screw. It's a 5 16th head on it. But anyway, uh, I ended up taking off this uh, kick panel. Not a kick panel, but uh, where your knees go. This piece of trim. And that means you have to take that piece of trim off. Uh, there's a five, uh, 7 16 bolt over there. And a half inch bolt over here. And there's three screws up here. It, that piece of trim just pulls out. So uh, I know someone asked me a while ago in my uh, video on the ignition where the amplifier was. And the amplifier is right here. And, I, and uh, you have to take all that off to get at the amplifier. And it's hung on this bracket that is held in by these keyhole type fasteners. But that's where the bracket is. So now I've, I have access to the uh, grounds that I was talking about. And there's the gray wire right there. So I'm going to get them cleaned up and put them back together and see if this will, will work. I did the ground. Let's have a peek. So I put a star washer behind it. I cleaned up the, around the primer. It wasn't bad. Uh, it wasn't terrible looking, but it's good and tight now. But it's still not letting me open the uh, door or the window on the passenger side. The driver side window works. The passenger side's not. We did the ground. The ground didn't fix the problem. So let's, I decided I would go into the console switches. Now, I'm not, I wasn't too concerned that it would be in here because of the sound it's making out at the door. So it was making a clicking sound and the lights were dimming. So it was trying to get power to the motor. But I wanted to check this terminal right here. This is the power supply for the up and down on this. And if you're in here, be very careful. These are exposed uh, bus bars. They're live. Uh, when the key is on, they're all live and ready to go. So you can easily short them out on the metal bracket there. So shut off the ignition and better yet, take the battery post off just to save yourself uh, shorting out. Anyway, I came in here and I took it apart and I cleaned it, but it really wasn't dirty. I know Beverly had all these apart and cleaned them up. The switches were all working good. So anyway, now... I guess it's to take the door panel off and check that uh, plug and the motor. Maybe the motor's having troubles. This is the motor I did the uh, video on replacing the little pucks in. So at that time, I cleaned the motor all out and everything. But hey, you know what? It, that was a year ago or whatever. So who knows? I got a spare motor sitting over there. So let's uh, take the door panel off and see if we can get this window to go up and down. Uh, we'll test right at the plug. Maybe the plug has got some issues. Well, I put the window switch back in. Uh, if, you're, if you've never had one of these out before, again, I said be very gentle, but there's a little slot in the front. I don't know if you can see it or not right there. And you can put a tool in, a flat tool, and push back on it to release it. Uh, sometimes if it's loose enough, you can push back and pull up. This one here, you can push back and pull up, but when, pull back on it and push it back down so you don't bend that tab. But if you're having trouble getting it out, you can put a tool. There's a little clip in there and push back on the clip and it should pop up over there, but be very careful with it. All right, I put the kick or the knee pan back on the trim, trim on the console. So now I'm gonna tackle the door. So what has to come off on the door? Well, all this trim front on this end, the window winder for the sail window, the little uh, vent window. This has to come off. This has a clip behind it, like a Chevy ones with the horseshoe clip. This is put on with the Phillips. There's two screws down in here. And then there's all this trim over in this side. And then this uh, door lock knob will have to come off. The light's fine. You can leave it the way it is for now because it's just on a, it's hooked to the door panel. And then you have to kind of lift it up out of that groove that's on the bottom. And if you watched my uh, repair one, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's a little L groove on the bottom that goes in. It rests in that down in there. I got all the parts off. Uh, oh, and there's two screws left in there yet, sorry. But I wanted to show you this uh, tool. Uh, most of you guys already know, or people rather, you, know, you already know what these tools are for, but maybe you're not. So, you get a tool like this, and it really, if you're doing this work, you should have one. So let me just pull this off and show you how it works. So what it does, 
you get between the the little nylon uh, protector Let's see if I can get it out here pull that off and I'll show you how it goes so what it does is it goes in and it pushes that little horseshoe clip out and you just kind of work it in um, I had the clips in so I can come in this way like that and it shoves that clip back so as soon as you get it off just take and push the clip back on like so and then it's ready to go next time and then you can put the the cover back on like so so that's that these are cheap i don't know i think i paid 10 bucks for it worth having so i've got the panel off and i've got the wire harness pulled out here and it doesn't seem to be corroded or anything like that but i think you guys should probably you won't hear it likely but uh it's still just clicking the motor itself is clicking so I know there's power there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this plug apart and I grab one of my battery packs and I'm going to jump her from ground to the red and yellow wires to, to get it, see if it'll go up now maybe that motor is pooched it's possible the regulator is too tight adjusted too tight and it's jammed itself but let's find out so I've got my battery pack here you probably just see the top of it you won't be able to see the whole thing so I have my positive lead and uh my ground lead so the ground is yellow and it's hooked to the ground it's just hooked inside the ground socket that was the uh gray wire coming that was the ground remember we fixed the ground or we we did work to the ground so that's it right there and that's coming from the car so that i have unplugged it and now i'm in the ground with the yellow wire and i had the red wire on my battery pack so let's see if we can get this to move at all i hope you guys can see it so i'll just tap the thing there it goes look so it's working so why why is it working now and it wasn't before i think there's something wrong right here in this ground it feels soft right there you see how easily that bends I'm thinking that ground wires broke off in there and I happen to just get it lucky. Okay, I got it set up here and I don't like piercing wires, but at this point, that's what I'm gonna do on this ground wire. So I got the, that one there and I got my continuity tester set up and I've got this one shoved in beside the, beside it, beside the outward point. So what I'm testing is from here to here and you can already hear there's an issue. See? There's something break there's a there's a bad wire in there somewhere. So I'm gonna pull I'm gonna slice this open and see what's in there. And uh, maybe I'll find nothing, but there's something going on. And then I'll put some uh, liquid tape over that. Okay, so what I found, um, this is a, the terminal itself is in nice shape and it's got a nice snug fit over the uh, male part right here but what's going on is right down in the joint right in here it's all tarnished uh, i mean it looks good but if you look if you could see in closer which is very hard to see the wire is all tarnished and uh, it seems like that's where the problem is so what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, open that up snip that back a little bit clean it up put some new get some new copper down in that hole crimp it back on put it back in the in here I only slit one side open and I'll tape it up good uh, I got some liquid tape I'll put on it and uh, go from there I got that all cleaned up and now I'm running it off the switch in here it seems to be working pretty good right there that's back up back down back up now these windows have always been problematic, so I'm sure hoping that uh, that's the last of the problem, but hey, it's a Ford Thunderbird power window, so good chance that that uh, will happen again. But for now, it's working pretty good. I'll uh, button up that uh, plug there now, get it all cleaned up, get it all taped up and sealed or 
liquid tape and sealed. And get the door panel back on. And hopefully that by the time by the time I get the door panel back on, it's not doing it again. <laughs> anyway, I took the opportunity to clean the plugs up really well as well in there, clean them up nice. They're good tight fit. So this shouldn't be a problem for a while. But hey, it's a Ford. Could be uh, tomorrow. Could be bad again. Got some liquid tape on it. I'm gonna let that uh, stiffen up a bit, and uh, she should be good. I'll, I'll put a wrap of uh, harness tape around it as well. And hopefully, that's all the problems for that sucker. Put some uh, harness tape over it so it's all done up nice, sealed up there nice. So I'll put it all back together. I'm going to put this panel back on. And hopefully that's it for a while on this, on this door window, or this window motor. Well, there it is all back together. Working pretty good. Excellent. Happy with that. No guarantees though. Uh, hopefully that was helpful to someone uh, struggling with their windows. Uh, these are fairly common problems with these cars. The grounds are generally bad. Uh, every one of those little joints, you have to check them as well, those connectors like that. This one didn't look terrible, but uh, clearly it was a problem, even though it was just uh, the wire was tarnished up. It only takes just a a little bit too much load for the ground and that's the end of her anyway um you may not have window issues but at least you know now uh when the time comes some places to look uh, where the grounds are i would start with the grounds uh or the switch like the the console switch sometimes is a good place to start if you're not getting power to the console switch well there's no point in doing anything else uh start with that but whatever you know you'll figure it out get yourself test light um multimeter and stuff like that and and go for it it's not terribly difficult uh sometimes it's awkward uh like i said getting in this thing uh to do the driver's side i'll have to take the seat out i don't have to but it'll be a heck of a lot easier but you saw i had to take the so the knee pan off here the lower dash trim off to get out and that made it so much easier and i got to point out where the amplifier is for the uh Permatune system. Pretty much all I have to say there, rambling a tiny bit. Uh, let's uh, wrap her up here and everybody can go about their day. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.